let's start with a quick review of last time. Um, if you remember last time, we talked about parameter and statistic, where parameter was the entire population, and statistic was a sample that we took from the population. And we used the statistics to try to estimate what the population would look like. Today we're going to talk about this idea of sampling variability. And what this idea of sampling variability is, is it's if we repeatedly take this sample, we get a distribution that should look something like the population distribution. So kind of the idea is you take a whole bunch of samples from the population and you kind of see what you would kind of get. And we've done that a little bit last time. We're going to kind of define it a little bit better. So let's get some of these words. The population distribution um, is the given values of all the individuals in a population, which kind of makes sense. That's, that's everything. The distribution of the sampling data it shows the values for all individual samples. So, like, this is every single, like, distribute, like, distribution that we could possibly take. And we said that last time is it's going to look pretty much like the population. So here's probably just a better picture of what kind of goes on with this. So just imagine um, we have this as our population distribution. So these are all the red and blue chips. Um, so we start taking samples, and we take all the possible samples that we could get, and it looks something like this. Because some of the times we're going to get more reds and blues. We can see at the end of the day that the median of this thing is actually the true, like, it's 50-50 for the other thing. So when we take a sampling distribution, if the sampling distribution or how we're taking the samples is correct, it should match the exact parameter that we had before. So it's actually like a good estimation. Um, we're going to say that this sampling distribution is an unbiased estimator if that is true, if that the parameter that we get is exactly the same as the sampling distribution. So if like x bar is the same as mu, we're going to say it's unbiased. If they're not exactly the same, that means this, how we're taking the samples is probably not random enough and we're biasing it towards a side. So you generally want the thing to be unbiased or you want it to be biased but you want to know how it's biased. The other thing we like to talk about is variability, like when we take these samples. If you take a small number of samples, it's it's a very very like it has a lot of variability because you could accidentally get something on the low end, accidentally get something on the high end, maybe only get a couple things in the middle, but the more and more you take of the samples and the closer you get to the actual like parameter, um it should start to put everything in the the where the mean should actually be. So you'll have low variability when you have more samples. So the more samples you can take, the better it should be. And so that kind of should make some intuitive sense. So more samples, lower variability, lower variability, the closer it is to the actual parameter, so it's better for us, as long as we didn't have a biased sample. And so that's the idea of this variability statistic, which is des like describes the sampling distribution. And again, larger sample size, smaller spread, which makes complete sense. And um, the sampling distribution shouldn't depend on the population as long as the population is at least 10 times the sample size. So um, it really doesn't matter how, many, how big the population is. It more matters of how many times you're taking the sample to get closer to the parameter. And again, this, these kind of graphs just show like the ideal things, like, like high bias, low variability. That actually can be good for us. As long as we know that it's off by a little bit, we can go, oh, it's off by a little bit, so the cluster should be in here. So we just, the biggest thing is knowing low variability. This is bad. If I get this graph, I have no idea where the actual mean is. It's just things are all over the place. I don't know how anything's correlated. It really doesn't help me. Um, this is super, super bad because, again, we have the same dot pattern, but now it's not even getting on the, the graph because it's biased and it has high variability. This is ideal. 
So this happens very rarely that there's no bias in how you take the thing and you have low variability, but this is what we would try to produce. This is probably, again, the second best option because even if it ha if it's even if it has high bias, as long as it has low variability, we can kind of guess, oh, everything's clustered in here, and then you can find the bias and go, oh, that's the bias. So you can start moving it towards the actual parameter. So that's kind of how the different things um, shape out. And a lot of times you're going to get like graphs that kind of look like this. Again, we can talk about the different type of things. I would say this looks like a good estimate because you can see that it has variability, but everything seems to be focused around that normal curve. So that one's good. You can see that this one is slightly shifted, so it's skewed. So it doesn't look, it looks to have a little bit of bias because it's biasing towards this end but it does have pretty low variability. This is a little bit more variability than this one, um, which is not as good for us because it kind of has these two hills. Um, so this one is actually not very good for us. This one has more variability than the first one, um, but it doesn't look to be biased. This one is heavily biased. So this one is heavily biased, but again, it has very low variability. So it can really help us. So again, the graphs that are really actually good for us is this one is very good for us because it has lower variability and low bias. This one has very high bias but low variability, so that's pretty good for us. This one across the board, um, very high variability, so we wouldn't want to use it. This one has lower variability but high bias. It's not as biased as this one, and er, but it has... Um, more variability than this one, so I'd rather go probably with this one over it. But you can kind of see now how the graphs and the shapes of these sampling distributions can help you out. Again, you want the spread to be pretty close together, and you want it to look fairly normal. So the ideal, um, the ideal graph is kind of this one. Everything is like, like you can see that this is very normal everything's kind of close together. This one's pretty good because it has pretty low variability, but this is better because as soon as you start to um, push things together, as soon as you start taking more samples, you'll start decreasing that variability and that's good. So that's the main idea today is just to try to like figure out like does the sample have high variability? If so, how can we fix that we can take more samples? If it's biased, where is it biased? Um, so that's, that's the main idea behind these things.